Oh, man. <laughs> What's up, guys? This is Jerry with Florida Freedivers, and today I'm here with... Eric, who's also here with, with Florida Freedivers. And today, we have some stuff set out in front of us, a couple of things. But it's really just a long-winded answer to a question that we get all the time. All the time. Right? So that question is, <clears throat> how much weight do I need to be a freediver or to go freediving slash spearfishing slash whatever you're into? And it is a question that we get maybe 30, 40, 50, 100 times a day, um, depending on the day, maybe once a day. However, we're here to answer it right now. And the answer is that there is no answer. Yeah, so it's really <laughs> dependent on a couple variations, uh, what you yourself are doing. Yeah. Um, so common, common questions, right, that we are going to ask right away is, what's your wetsuit thickness? Definitely. Are you wearing a wetsuit? So are you in the Bahamas not wearing a wetsuit, just in a rash guard? Are you wearing a 1.5 mil just top? Are you wearing a 1.5 mil with pants? Are you wearing a 3 mil? Are you in the springs wearing a 5 mil? There's so many variations that kind of make up what you need to adequately weight yourself before you ask us what weight you actually need to purchase. Yeah. So a big question for me as well is, um, usually I ask how deep are they diving, and that allows me to somewhat deduce what type of diving they're doing as well. Um, because there's definitely a range of weighting options that you can do as far as being positively or negatively buoyant on the surface, um, depending on how deep you're diving. Yeah. You know, so generally, if you're lobstering, diving a little bit shallower, people are going to tend to want to be a little bit more negatively buoyant on the bottom. It's going to help you, you know, stay up under those little lobster ledges in five to ten feet of water, let's say. Um, and in that first section of the water column, you know, let's say from zero to 33 feet, yeah. you're pretty positively buoyant. Like there's a lot of, that's where your most buoyant range yeah. is going to be. So if you're diving five, 10 feet, it's going to take a decent amount of weight to keep you on the bottom compared to if you're diving 60 to 100 feet, let's say. Any, anything deeper than 33 feet, really. Yeah, exactly. So um, we use that number 33 feet because it's actually in meters for our, our classes that uh, we teach here at Florida Freedivers. The level one course is a 66 foot course and half of that is going to be at your 33 and that's a 20 meter course, right? Yeah. It's also where the atmospheres are changing. So that's where you're finding that you're become more negatively buoyant, you know, uh, past the 33 feet versus above the 33 feet. So yeah, um, different variations of what you can do for the depth that you're free diving. Yeah. So for example, um, in our level one course, which like I said, is a 20 meter or a 66 foot course, um, we generally teach that you want to be neutrally buoyant at that th 33 foot mark at yeah. that 10 meter point. Um, and that's going to allow you to be positively buoyant above that range so that if a hypoxic event were to occur, such as a loss of motor control or a shallow water blackout, um, you're in that positive buoyancy range. So you're going to be able to float to the surface, which is a huge factor for that, yeah. um, especially for deeper diving. But then you're also going to be negative under that um, 33 foot mark. So it's going to be a little bit easier for you to complete the deeper section of that dive where a hypoxic event is very, very unlikely to occur. Right. Um, and then you're going to come back to that, that buoyancy point and yeah. be able to, it'll help you actually through the, through the harder part of your dive so you can float up. Yeah. And something in our courses that we always teach is efficiency. So if you are adequately weighted for like a course at that neutral buoyancy at 33 feet, it's going to be more advantageous for you to start floating up above that second atmosphere or the 33 feet range to basically save some oxygen and uh, make sure that none of those kind of safety issues occur. For sure. Uh, but let's get into, you know, the different variations of the weights that you can do. Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, I don't like anything over a one pound weight. I, I like keeping everything as slim and as streamlined as possible. Yeah. Um, and I, I generally, myself personally, do not like these nylon weight belt clips here. So a little harder to maneuver, a little harder to kind of pull out. 
Um, this would be, you know, a good price point belt though. They're definitely still good belts. They still clip in, they still work, they still do the job great. Um, but I am a, a, you know, my personal opinion, I'm a, I'm a firm advocate for uh, the Marseille belt. Yeah, uh, what it's we just, call the Marseille belt. It's just a little different, you know, belt buckle. It's a little easier to safety release. Um, and I find the different brands and all that stuff too have a little bit more stretchiness and, and retention of what you could actually utilize. Yeah. Um, there's different things that you could get into too. Um, so generally the topics are always going to be wetsuit, fresh water versus salt water, um, depth that you're free diving in the actual capacity of what you're doing and what you're working. Um, but within that, it's going to matter on a couple things too, which are going to change. They can always change. So everything that you add onto your body can add more weight or less weight. A uh, good thing is always to do some buoyancy checks. Um, the other thing about that too is let's say that you start free diving and you become a better free diver next month, a better free diver the next month. So what people don't always realize too is that your lung capacity can start to expand. Normal males, right, have a 6.2 liter capacity. Normal females have a 5.5 liter capacity. Uh, and as we start to free dive, we can grow those into, I've heard of almost like 10.7 liters of air within the normal lung capacity. Which is insane. It's crazy, yeah, twice, twice the amount of air that you can take with you on a dive, right? We would all love to do that. Um, but with that added capacity, you're also going to become more buoyant. So it's ever changing and to test that, you have to do a couple things, which we teach us in, in the course and all that. But I mean, realistically, you need to do what's gonna be efficient for you. So the amount of weight's gonna vary onto different things that you are doing personally. Uh, we have some different weights all here. There's definitely the you know single pounds, like I said, uh, I'm a big advocate for. There's two pounders sitting back here that we have in different uh, colors and, and different type of variations with the belts, uh, like we were kind of talking about. Then you get into accessories, which kind of go you know, way in depth to also depending on what you are doing too. Yeah. Um, simple D-ring up here. I don't know if you wanna touch on what we could actually, you know, utilize that for. Sure, so like you were saying, you can set your weight belt up for whatever particular type of diving you're doing. You know, if you're, if you're straight up line diving, like just going up and down on a line, maybe competitive diving, there's not a whole lot of need to like really trick out your weight belt. The one pound weights, like you said, they're, Usually what we recommend, myself included. Um, but for example, like personally, I have two weight belts because where we're located, we mostly do a lot of boat diving, fairly deep, let's say 60 to 80 foot range is where a lot of our diving, spearfishing is rather out here. Um, so that weight belt that I run is pretty simplistic, right? There's not a lot of stuff on it because I don't need a bunch of accoutrements um, I have a single D-ring on there just because it's nice to be able to clip off whatever I might need to. I run a roller gun, so I use like the, the load assist that we generally find on that type of gun. I like to be able to clip that onto my weight belt. Uh, it just keeps it out of the way, it's easy to get to. And, but then from the other aspect of that, I do really enjoy shore diving. Um, not that we have a ton of that in our area, but when I can get out and do it, I really, really enjoy it. So. I actually have a totally different weight belt for it because I don't like having to switch my weight belts and change them up and change the layout of weights and that kind of thing. Um, and on my shore diving belt, I run two pound weights because I need a little bit more weight. You know, I still usually wear my three mil wetsuit, which is a pretty buoyant wetsuit. I get cold very easily. So do I. Yes. I, I definitely do. If the water temperature is under 80 degrees, I'm wearing a three mil which is just how I am. Spoiled, Florida boys. Yeah, um, so I do need a decent amount of weight. So if I'm diving five feet to 10 feet, to sink a three mil wetsuit, uh, it's, I mean, I'll wear like eight pounds sometimes. <laughs> I mean, if I'm really diving that five foot range, that's what it takes. But, um, so I'll run two pounders for that kind of thing. And then I have generally two D rings cause I'll clip my, um, my load assist to one side for my short roller guns, and then I also like to clip my float line to the other side, which has my dive flag and stuff like that, just to keep things separated. Um, and even like stringers, belt stringers, that kind of thing, I, I have set up on there and a separate knife that, you know, I like to have everything all ready to go. I don't have to switch anything out, so. 
Um, you can get into all kinds of fun stuff. These little D-rings are great, super versatile. This is one from Omer that we sell at the shop here. Um, we do have some cool stainless ones as well that I like. Um, so there's a lot of things you can run on there. Yeah, and I, I think the variations are endless. Even if you're a you know, Bahamas pole spear person, you can put a belt reel on this belt. Um, maybe you're just a photographer and want to run some type of safety redundancy so you don't drop that camera out into the abyss and uh, just clip it on just for that safe peace of mind onto a D-ring. But cameras and housings are so cheap. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. I hate touching those things, just how expensive they are. Yeah, right. I, I just don't even like to get involved into the camera stuff, but um, some people do. So if that's you, D-ring maybe for some safety redundancy will definitely be a good peace of mind for you. Um, but, you know, put your questions or uh, comments in the, you know, the section below and we'll be happy to answer any of them. Um, but think of those different variations that might be specific to you and your diving where you're coming into the shop and asking for how much weight I might need or even for the different type of belts and you know, makeups that you might need for your specific locations or yeah. that dive location that you're going to. One thing I'll add real quick, um, just to kind of like somewhat answer our original question of how, how much weight do I need. Um, figure out what you like to do. And basically what it comes down to is go out and do that thing and take weight with you, probably more weight than you need, and figure out what range works best for you in that scenario. Um, and then you can figure out from there what you might need, you know, if you decide to go, so let's say you're setting up a weight belt to be a shallow water belt, um, and then you wanna go dive deeper, uh, you know that you're probably gonna have to take some weight off of there. So you can kind of get like a good base range of what it takes to switch back and forth. But I generally like to recommend to people to maybe get five to six pounds in, in single pound increments um, as a, like a base start. Yeah. You're always, it's always good to have a few extra pounds of weight anyway, just in case you need it, your buddy needs it, or let's, you can add a pound on your weight belt if you happen to wear an extra floaty wetsuit that day, whatever. Um, start with around that range, and then you can work from there and see, see where you actually land. Yeah, always you can take off, you know, one pound at a time, throw it back in the boat, throw it in a float, even if you're doing like a shore dive or something like that. Mm -hmm. But just, yeah, find that range that's, that's good for you. Um, yeah. So yeah, feel free to put your, your questions and comments down in the section below and uh, subscribe to the channel and we'll be happy to help you for any things here in the shop. Stop by and see us. And get a Marseille belt because it's way better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. But let us know down below which style of belt you prefer. Yeah. Let us know down in the comments and always remember, subscribe to the channel, like this video because it makes us feel very happy when we see the little thumbs up thing light up yeah. and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Definitely. See you guys later.